Welcome. Today we're going to talk about current division. Current division is a scenario that occurs fairly often in practice and so today we're going to look at it and instead of having to use KCL and KVL and Ohm's Law every time current division comes up in the future, we're just going to be able to write down the answer immediately because of the analysis that we do today. So let's get started. Current division is the situation when you have a current, in this case we'll have a real simple example, a current I source in this, which flows to the right. When that current gets to this node, the current will divide. Some of the current will flow through the R1 resistor and some of the current will flow through the R2 resistor. And so there's a current I1 and I2 which is the I source current divided and that's where the name comes from. It's a situation where a current is being divided among two parallel paths. So what we're going to do today is we're going to find out what I1 and I2 are directly. We're going to do the analysis and then we're going to just commit that result to memory so the next time when this situation, when the current division situation comes up, we can just immediately write down the value of I1 and I2 because of the work we do today. So let's get started. So if you look at this really quickly, we see, uh, we see I source, uh, R1 and R2 are all in parallel. And since they're in parallel, we know they all have the same voltage across them, so we're going to go ahead and define that voltage, and we'll just call it V. And so V is the voltage that's across all three of these circuit elements. So the current I source has to flow this direction, and when it gets to this node, some of it will go down, and we'll call that I1, and some of it will go through this path, and we'll call that I2. Now to tackle this, you know, we're going to need some Ohm's Law, V equals IR, but it turns out in this situation the dual version of Ohm's Law is actually more convenient, and remember that is I equals V times G, where G is the conductance. Conductance is the reciprocal of resistance, so there's a G1, which actually equals 1 over R1, and this resistance could be called G2, a conductance G2, which is 1 over R2. And so using the conductance view, I equals V times G. So now we're ready to dive in. I source via KCL is very obviously I1 plus I2. Since all three of these circuit elements are in parallel, they all have a voltage V across them, so I can find the current I1. The current I1 is going to be V G1, V is the voltage across the G1 conductance, and so I equals V times G says that I1 is going to be VG1. Likewise, I know that I2 is going to be VG2. So if you take this, you can pull the Vs out, G1 plus G2, right? and then this gives us the relationship that V is going to be I source over G1 plus G2. Actually we already knew this because we have two resistors which could also be viewed as two conductances in parallel and conductances in parallel will combine and have an equivalent conductance which is G1 plus G2 and you see that uh, cropping up down here in this relationship. Well, now that we know what V is, we're ready to find the answers we're looking for, and that is I1, the current flowing down through the R1 resistor, the G1 conductance, I1 is going to be I source, uh, excuse me, I1 is going to be V times G1. We just found what V1, V is. V is I source. All right, so we're taking this equation and sticking it up here. I source G1 over G1 plus G2. And then likewise we can solve for I2 directly. I2 is going to be I source times G2 over G1 plus G2. Again using this relationship and sticking it in the VG2 equation. So to summarize we have this relationship and so we can put it in practice. We have a current I source and this current is divided, I can find this current and this, this current right away. I1 is going to be the I source current. That current is going to be divided. It's going to be divided between two conductances, G1 and G2. So that goes in the denominator. And if I'm looking for the current in the G1 conductance, I need to put G1 in the numerator. I2 
is going to be the I source current. It's going to be divided between two conductances, G1 and G2. And if I'm looking for the I2 current, I need to stick G2 in the numerator. Now, historically, in, in this course, you know, we've been talking about our resistances in terms of their resistance, not their conductance. And so let's take this first relationship and let's rearrange it and figure out what it means in terms of resistance, R1 and R2, instead of G1 and G2. So remember, of course, that G1 is simply the reciprocal of R1. And so we can start replacing the G's with the R's. And G2, of course, is 1 over R2. Well, that's kind of ugly with all those fractions, so let's clean that up. So we'll multiply through by unity, R1, R2, over R1, R2. And we do this, we'll get I source. The numerator, the R1s cancel, and you'll be left with R2. And down here in the denominator, when you multiply through, the, in the first term, the R1s cancel, and you'll get R2. In the second term, the R2s cancel, and you'll get R1. And so you'll see when you're doing current division in terms of the resistors that the numerator, the denominator looks largely the same. It's, it's just resistance instead of conductance, but the numerator is a bit different. So let's, it's summarized on this slide, and let's kind of step through a little memory mnemonic to help you. If you have a current I source, and it's going to be divided between two resistors R1 and R2, the current that flows through the first resistor, I1, is going to be the total current. It's going to be divided between the R1 and R2 resistors. And if I'm looking for the current flowing through the first resistor, I need to stick the other resistor in the numerator, as we saw on the previous slide. And I didn't derive I2, but you'll see that if you were to do it yourself, it works very much the same way. The analysis is just the same. If you're looking for the current I2, I2 is going to be the total current I source, and you're dividing it between the two resistors R1 and R2. And if I'm looking for the current I2, and it's going to be in, I'm, I'm looking for the current in the second resistor, I need to put the other resistor R1 in the numerator, which is what we've summarized right here in these relationships for you. So these are the ones you kind of want to commit to memory if you're going to use the resistance view, which we typically do. And this is the view that lets us figure out I1 directly by looking at I source and the resistance. You can take the analysis that we started with using I, I equals V times G, and that can be extended to a large number of resistors, or in this case conductances, G1, G2, G3, so forth. GN that are all in parallel. Of course, they're in parallel, so they'll have the same voltage across it. And so you can extend this. We know the I source current is going to be really I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus dot 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 plus IN. Each of those I's are V times the respective conductance. Solve, rearrange, and you'll find the general relationship that looks like this. If I'm looking, for instance, for the current in the third conductance, G3, then I know that I3 is going to be the total current, it's going to be divided among all the conductances we have in the circuit. And if I'm looking for the current in the third conductance, I need to put the third conductance in the numerator. And that's just an extension of the very first derivation we did. I want to point out, though, because we typically use resistance as our view instead of conductance. We typically have a resistance view instead of a conductance view. The relationship we derive for resistances, where you have the, quote, other resistor in the numerator. If I'm looking for the I1 current, notice R2 is up there. And then if I'm looking for the I2 current, then R1 goes in the numerator. I want you to notice that this relationship here does not, it does not extend, extend to more than two resistors. And that comes from the fact that when we turn the conductance into resistances and multiplied through, if you do this for more than two resistors, 3, 4, 5, 10, 100, you're going to get a lot of cross terms. So this relationship here does not extend out any further. So if you're going to memorize a resistance view, remember the resistance view only, only works for these two resistors. If you have to do a whole large number of resistances, you need to make them conductances and use this form because this one does extend to an arbitrary number.
All right, let's put it in practice and see how this works. So here's the case of a, of a current I source being divided, and it's being divided between two resistors in parallel, and these two resistors are the same value. So let's find I1. I1 is going to be I source, right? and it's that current's being divided, and it's being divided between two resistors, R and R. And then since I'm looking for the current in I1, I need to stick the other resistor in the numerator. We're doing a resistance view, so the other guy goes in the numerator. In this case, it doesn't matter because they're both R. And you find that I1 is simply going to be hit one half I source. Likewise, if you want to find the current I2, I2 is going to be the I source current. It's going to be divided between these two resistors that are both R. If I'm looking for I2, I need to stick the other guy, the other resistor in the numerator, R. Again, it doesn't matter because they're both the same size. And we find that I2 is 1 half I source. And this result shouldn't be too surprising because look what's going on here. We have a, a, the current flows to the right. And when it gets to this node, the current, the charges have to make a decision. Which way are they going to go? They're going to go the I1 path, the I2 path. Well, as the charges come to this junction and make their decision, if you will, they both see paths that have the same complexity or the same resistance or the same difficulty. So half of them are going to go one way and half of them are going to go the other. And that's what current division says. If you take a current and divide it between two equal resistors, the current will split equally. Half goes one way, half goes the other. Let's look at another example that has some numbers in it. So here we have a situation. We've got a 20 milliamp source and it's, we're doing current division between the two resistors, 1 ohm and 4 ohms. So we could solve this with KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law, but we, now that we have the, the current division equations that we've derived and memorized, so we can just find I1 and I2 directly. I1 is going to be the 20 milliamp current. That 20 milliamps is going to be divided between 1 ohm and 4 ohm resistances. And since I'm looking for I1, and I'm doing a resistance viewpoint, the I1 current needs to have the other resistance in the numerator, and we find that we get simply 16 milliamps. If I'd like to find the current I2, I2 is going to be the 20 milliamp current, the total current here, 20 milliamps. It's going to be divided between 1 and a 4 ohm resistor. Since I'm looking for the current I2, the current in the second resistor, I need to put the other one in the numerator since it's a current, since it's a resistance view. And we find that I2 is going to be 4 milliamps. And you can kind of see here that worked out correctly because if you take I1 and I2 and combine them together, we see we get the 20 milliamps back again, which it has to be because that's how big our source is. And then if you stop and look at this and think about it for a second, it should make a good bit of sense because when these charges come to this junction. They have to make a decision. Some of, they're gonna go, some of them are going to go through the, one, uh, the I1 path, and some of them are going to take the I2 path. Well, the ones that go down the I2 path, look, at, look and see what they see. The charges, when they get to this point, they see a 4 ohm path back to where they want to go, and they see a 1 ohm path back to where they want to go. Some of them see a large resistance, a difficult path, and then they, others, and then they see the, the easy path. And so what would you do? Well, they're just like people. Some of the charges are going to choose to go the hard way, but most of them are going to choose to go the easy way. And we see that that's what works out in the current division. I1, the current through the uh, easy path, the low resistance path, is 16 milliamps. The current through the high resistance path, the more difficult path, is 4 milliamps. So more charges go the easy way, and a few of them go the harder way. Well, and the relative proportion of these two is based on the relative proportion of the two resistances in current division. So this is really the relationships you probably want to commit to memory. Remember, this one only works for two resistors if you're going to do the resistor viewpoint. But now with these, these relationships, we can now find the currents I1 and I2 straight away without having to trudge through KVL and KCL and Ohm's Law every time. We can immediately just write down the answer I1 and I2. And since current division occurs so much in practice, this is a really useful thing to have memorized. It will save you a lot of time as you go forward. All right, thanks for listening, and we'll talk again in the next set of lectures.